So, my name is Gabe Drake. I'm a member of the Winchester High School National Honor Society. We'd like to thank you for your willingness to uh, be interviewed today. Our plan is to include the full-length interviews in the Winchester High School uh, History Department's virtual archive. Uh, we also will be using short segments of your interview in our Veterans Day program, if that's okay with you. Sure. And uh, the students will watch the program from their classroom since we can't do the formal ceremony this year. Um, and if you want to watch it, it'll also be on the school's website, as well as probably their Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, for you to watch. Uh, unless you have any questions, uh, I guess we'll get started. And if there's any questions you don't feel comfortable answering, just sit, if that's You're okay with us. Now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you please tell me your name and your years of service in the military? Um, First Sergeant Samuel Ford, retired. Um, I spent 24 years in the service. I did four years of, almost four years of active duty Army and 20 years of National Guard service here in Illinois. Yep, thank you for your service. Thank you. All right, why did you pick to join the Army? Um, if I recall, uh, my senior year, uh, we had a recruiter come in. We might have had a couple of different recruiters come in. Uh, the one that stood out the most was the Army recruiter. Um, not going to lie, I, I'm a twin. I had a sister. I knew my parents couldn't afford um, college for both of us. I was kind of undecided what I wanted to do. Um, so a couple of buddies and, and myself, we decided we were going to check out the Army. And uh, we did. We checked out the Army. And, and uh, a best friend of mine, Aaron McEvers, we joined together. And he went to one side of the United States for his uh, AIT, his advanced training. And uh, um, basic training, and I went to the other. So uh, we was kind of hoping to be together, <laughs> yeah. but we got split up. Like I said, he went to California, I went to South Carolina, and I think I've seen him twice, maybe three times since since we both joined the service. Yeah. Uh, what do you remember about your boot camp or training experiences? Like anything that uh, stands out in your eyes, or anything that helped you, you know, get through the the rough process. Uh, to start out, um, it was rough. Uh, I'd never been away from home, especially that far. Uh, never really traveled that far. Um, like I said, I went to South Carolina, and uh, uh, the first couple weeks was pretty rough. Uh, they pretty much break you down and, and build you back up. So um, some of the things that stand out is is going out, spending a couple nights in the woods, and you had to basically survive. They threw some scenarios at you. Um, there was a couple nights we had rain. One night in particular we had rain and pretty much flooded out our tent. So we had to pack up and move out of there. So it was just like a little river running right through the middle of our tent for some reason. But um, what got me through it, um, friends and family. Uh, we, we got a short time to call home. Uh, so what we could do is pick up the phone and call. And... Um, Talk to your parents. Parents got you through a lot, but having friends and uh, girlfriends along the way, they, they help you get through it. Awesome. Uh, during your years of service, are there any like memorable moments or people that you still you know talk to today or experiences that you'd be willing to share with us? Um, there's always people to talk to. Um, once you're in a service, you kind of get a brotherhood of uh, people. Uh, there's, there's certain people that do stand out. Uh, with my years of service, I, I could I could be here for a long time, telling you different people that that, that give me memorable moments. Um, you know, I've got some full bird colonels. A, a, a buddy of mine just made a, a two star general the other day. Um, those are those are great things um, to see. Uh, somebody that I used to serve with making the rank that he just did. A two star general is kind of almost heard of around our area. Um, Things that, things that I remember, um, trips, uh, our, our uh, annual training events that we went on. Um, went to Germany a couple different times. Uh, went down to the Panama Canal. Uh, went to Honduras for humanitarian missions. Uh, just several different places that, that I've been and, and went to. Uh, again, I could sit here and talk for hours uh, about all those places. Uh, those are the ones that stand out the most. Uh, Honduras, um, the Dominican Republic. Uh, we actually spent three weeks there uh, at night. I mean, to sleep where we slept. We actually slept in an old resort. It was actually on a beach. 
So that was kind of nice. I mean, yeah. that stands out quite a bit. And we got to spend three weeks there. But again, that was another humanitarian mission that we, we got to go on. Um, what do you remember missing here because you were gone? I wonder that. Um, With your family and stuff. Probably a little bit more freedom. Um, you got to kind of come and go and do as you please here. Um, you could go to the restaurants and, and you could see who you wanted to see. Um, you could go out. You could, you could do things that you wanted to do. You wasn't tied down to anything. Being in the service, it, it, at certain times, you were told what you could and couldn't do. Um, once I became a leader, uh, I, I didn't know what that was all about. You had to kind of keep your troops corralled because if you let them go out and have fun and too much fun, a lot of times they'll get in trouble. I'm not saying all of them, but, uh -huh. but sometimes they would go out and get in trouble. So you kind of keep that, you kind of keep them corralled so that, that none of that happens. But yeah, I would kind of say, and I'm not taking, I'm not saying we weren't free by any means, but just the freedom to do what you kind of wanted. In the military, you didn't have quite that freedom. So um, family and friends, you do miss. Um, but like I said earlier, the brotherhood, the sisterhood that you make with, with your fellow soldiers, that's what gets you through a lot. Uh, do you recall the day that your service ended? Like what did you do in the, the months to follow after you finished um, serving? Sure. Actually, it's coming up. Uh, it'll be three years ago, uh, November. Uh, so about the, I think the 12th of November, um, 17, 2017. Um, I retired from my full-time position, which is a federal technician at the Army National Guard at Camp Lincoln in Springfield, Illinois. Um, a month before that, they retired me out of the actual military, so I didn't wear the uniform for almost 45 days but I still worked as a civilian. Um, the day I left Camp Lincoln, I came to, I came back to Scott County, where, where I was, I, I'd put in for, I knew I was already getting out, and I got hired with uh, IDOT, uh, Department of Transportation. So I basically stopped working one day at, for the Army and started for the state the very next day. <laughs> <laughs> Busy schedule. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and what was the second part of that question? Uh, just what did you do in the, the days to follow? Kind of just, you know, recover? Did you relax? And uh, you said you went back to work, but... No, there was there was actually no recovery time, um, which, which was good. Um, a lot of people get out of the military, and it's hard for them. Uh, I've talked to a lot of my soldiers, a lot of fellow soldiers... It's hard to make that transition from, from being in the service and going back to civilian life. They're used to being told what to do or in a daily routine all the time and what they could and couldn't do in the military. So when they become a civilian, it's, it's hard to make that transition. Um, some can do it, some can't. Some need help transition. Uh, some try to get back out. You know, Some do their, their initial service of three, six, eight years, ten years, and they want to call it quits. And they get back to civilian life, and they can't do it. Um, I didn't have to do that. I, I, you know, I'm proud that I'd done 24 years, and, and it was time for me to get out and, and start being with my family. It was time to stop worrying and thinking about Sam. It was time to start thinking and worrying about the family and, and going to sporting events and things like that because I, I missed all a lot, a lot of events and sports with my kids and family yeah. time. Uh. How did your service and experiences in the service like affect your life or like change the outlook on life and the the military um, it, it makes you grow up pretty quick. I mean as soon as you come out of, of, of high school or, or any school um, and you join the service, they make an adult out of you pretty quick. Uh, you learn to do a lot of stuff on your own. Um, You start setting goals and accomplishments for yourself. Um, that's huge. And it just depends on how long you want to stay in the service on, on how much you get out of it. Um, my dad told me that if you're going to do something, do it to the fullest. Well, that's what I did. Uh, I made as much rank as I possibly could. There was only one more that I could have got before I got out. I wish I could have tried it, but again, I told you it was, it was time for me to get out. And that was going to be another, they wanted another five years of my life, my time. 
for theirs, and, and I wasn't ready to give that up yet. I was, I was done. I was ready for family. Um, it's for all the jobs that I had in the service. Uh, I started out as a light wheel diesel mechanic, so I got tons of training on that. Um, I can work on several different vehicles now, so that trained me for civilian life, working on different vehicles, um, just the basics, basic mechanics. Um, and then as I grew in, in leadership, you started to learn different types of leadership. That helped me in civilian, well, the, the, um, the job that I had at Camp Lincoln, my federal technician job, because I had to lead soldiers and civilians there as well. So throughout my career, I learned, I was taught, I was schooled, tons and tons of schooling and training prepped me for what I am today what I can do today and what I can do tomorrow. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm glad I've done it. I would do it all over again. So um, I would say the military's trained me well in, in the, to deal with different things here in the civilian life, in the real world. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you would like to add or you know say to someone in the future that would like to go into the military? Um, first of all, um, I should have said this at the beginning, thank you all for everything you guys are doing. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to come in and interview me, our, our fellow veterans, for, for Veterans Day ceremony. Um, that's, that's great. That's phenomenal. Uh, so, so thank you. Thank the high school. Um, thank both of you, especially for being here for the interview. Yeah, thank you. Um, What I, what I would say is if, if someone doesn't know really what they want to do in life, um, seek out a career, especially coming out of high school, in school. Um, the first three to six years if you join is huge. I mean, it, it, it can tell you if you want to make the military a career or the job you, you pick that you want to train to go into, you can get trained in that job and it gives you experience for those years you're getting paid for in the service. You could come out and start in a civilian job, the same or uh, close to the same thing you was trained on, and that's huge now because a lot of employers don't hire kids right off the street with no experience uh, with the military. Just say computers, for instance. You go in with a computer uh, job, you come out with three to six years with computer training right off the bat. Nobody gets that right out of high school. So I mean, you go to college, it could take four to five years to get your degree and then, then you get started from scratch but you don't have any experience so, um, not trying to be a recruiter by any means but uh, that, that's some things that I would I would tell people um, if kids get out of school they try college that still isn't what they seem to, to like try the service for three to six years it can change your life um, like I said I spent 24 years in it and I, I think I turned out well I think it, it trained me well and again, I would do it. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you for your service and thank you for your time coming in and interviewing today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I kind of want to make you tell a, a funny story about Jackson.